Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation, and quite a crazy day it is. North Korea confirming the successful testing of a miniaturized hydrogen bomb being denied by the United States, South Korea, and others. Nevertheless, it's very worrisome that a lunatic like this even has nuclear weapons to begin with. And if we had a real leader, he would be focused on reining in the terrorists in North Korea the terrorists in Syria and Iraq, and not trying to take away guns from law-abiding Americans. But that's an old story. The bottom line is we do not know, we really do not know whether he really has a hydrogen bomb. We do know this, a U.S. reconnaissance plane flew off of Okinawa Island 10 minutes before North Korea tested its alleged miniaturized hydrogen bomb on Sunday, according to Japanese media. And 10 minutes later, Seismic stations registered underground tremors in North Korea caused by a nuclear explosion. Now, North Korea said it was a miniaturized hydrogen bomb. Our spy plane, the RC-135V, returned to base six hours later, according to Japanese authorities, adding that the U.S. spy plane had apparently been keeping an eye on North Korean territory. Well, what does this really mean? Well, I don't know what it means. However, South Korea, which is North Korea's arch enemy, citing a source in the country's intelligence community, said that the underground explosion of under six kilotons of TNT was too slight to have been caused by a hydrogen device. Well, that doesn't reassure me. Six kilotons can ruin your day, whether it's hydrogen or merely a atomic bomb. What's the difference when it's in the hands of a deranged maniac like Kim Jong mentally ill's son, Kim Jong-un? And this is what happens when you have a lack of leadership in the world. U.S. officials, of course, don't believe North Korea actually tested a hydrogen bomb. Let's look at what we talked about yesterday on the Savage Nation. This is a new feature where I will do bullet points of the day before and open the show with them the day after, in case you missed any of the classroom experiences of the Savage Nation or the pure fun of it. One, we ask, does the sociopath in the White House feel the same about the First Amendment as he does about the Second Amendment? Does he feel that only a modest background check would be in order for anyone to speak out against the government? You know, after all, it's only a modest reining in of the First Amendment. Why not? Number two, Obama did not have crocodile tears for the Steinle family in San Francisco after an illegal alien shot her to death. Three, we reminded you that President Truman tried to take over a steel plant in the 1950s with an executive order, but he was stopped by the Supreme Court, which reminded President Truman that a president cannot make law. Apparently, Obama missed that while at Columbia Law School, and he missed that while practicing whatever he practices. I then pointed out that guns saved 20,000 Jews from the Nazi Holocaust, that is still up on michaelsavage.com. I also said that bullies make up a pretext to attack a smaller kid, just as Obama made up a pretext to attack the smaller kid being the white, heterosexual, middle-class American gun owner. He said that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, he's right. But didn't he say that you can yell fire in a crowded White House and set the world on fire? He's the one who ought to look himself in a mirror. We then said that Obama goons can now declare you mentally unstable to prevent you from getting a gun. That's what was done in Russia in the past. Now, that is very worrisome because that means that if you have PTSD or you're even a manic depressive, which is now known as I, what, bipolar disorder, your shrink has to report you to the FBI and they could take your guns away. Be very careful here. This is not a slippery slope. This is an avalanche that he set off yesterday. Obama doesn't have the money to do background checks on the Syrian immigrants pouring into the Americas. 
but now he has money to do background checks on legal gun owners. Where'd the money come from? I then said that Count Obumula drinks the blood of the Constitution one sip at a time. Those are some of the topics we talked about on the Savage Nation. We also said that the smart gunship that Obama is talking about can potentially give the government the power to turn all guns off at one time with the press of a key on a computer. I then reminded you that this is the result of the Cultural Revolution that began in the 1960s. I also reminded you that if what Obama was doing with guns was as widely as accepted as he claims it is, it would not be as controversial as it really is. I then explained to you that these new rules will change the relationship with mental health practitioners. It may put them out of business, because who is to decide what is a mental illness? And here is the most shocking part of yesterday's show. Yesterday, Obama referenced communist China in his gun speech, using that as a model for gun control. And I asked you, is that the direction he's taking us in? The answer is, we'll have to wait and see. Here are some of the other headlines. I invite you to call the show at 855-407-282. You're listening to the one and only Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE. Obama's executive orders are longer and more restrictive than previous administrations. Here's a shocker. The ballet dancing new prime minister of Canada, Trudeau, a total left-wing loser, said something that will amaze you. The ballet dancer Justin Trudeau has said that we will not bomb ISIS even if we are attacked. Instead, he is moving Canadian efforts towards training local forces and providing humanitarian aid in Syria and Iraq. In an interview with Global News, the left-wing ballet dancer, Justin Trudeau, said that he sees no reason to change this policy toward ISIS, and he went even further. He said even if Islamic terror attacked in, Fran in uh, Canada in a similar manner to the one in Paris on Canadian soil, he would not bomb ISIS anyway. In other words, he's become a surrender monkey. The Prime Minister of Canada, one of our best allies in history, has surrendered to Sharia law in advance without a shot being fired. Do you understand the danger we are in when you put liberals in high places? It gets even worse. But it's too early in the day for me to dump more on your plate than I have already done. Instead, I invite you to call on all of these incredible news stories. The phone number, again, if you missed it, is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Believe me, there are other news stories, but I don't want to shock you in this election year. I wish the election were tomorrow and Trump could just simply take over the next day. And speaking of Donald Trump, one of the most, I don't know how to put this, deranged authors in American history, successful, yes. Very wealthy, yes. The writer of crazy stories, yes, Stephen King, said that Donald Trump is a carnival man, an entertainer, and a buffoon. It gets even uglier. Stephen King, the lunatic, said... Donald Trump's fans are, listen to this, white, scared, and angry. As though it is a crime to be white, Stephen King. Don't you love all these white liberals who are suddenly ashamed of their skin color and attack white people? How is this happening? Why do you even buy their books or go to their movies? I don't understand. He went on, by the way, the lunatic writer Stephen King, who was as mad as his worst characters. Stephen King went on, and he said, Trump will never be elected, not so long as minorities, liberals, and educated people vote. But he has certainly exposed the, ugler, uh, the ugly underbelly of conservatives in America today. So let me ask you something. What do minorities, liberals, and educated people have in common? Can anyone put that together? Is it burning cities to the ground? I mean, what do they have in common? You mean if you're uneducated, you're a knuckle-dragging white retrograde fool you vote for trump well steven i'm far more educated than you are my books are better than yours are i have a best-selling radio show steven and i vote for donald trump i vote for donald trump in a minute in fact donald trump's going to be on the show very shortly i don't mean today in the very near future but i think stephen king what you've exposed is the ugler the uh, sorry the ugly underbelly of deranged authors Let's take a caller now, Jeff on WABC in New York. What a pleasure it is to have you, uh, Jeff. What's on your mind? Oh, thank you.
you very much. As far as North Korea is concerned, I think it's a distraction. Communist China and Russia is what we should be looking at, because because you see they they got tons of missiles. They're uh, they're, they're backing all these terrorist groups around the world directly and indirectly. What I see coming to this country is a global Tet offensive, a a surgical strike by by one of these major powers, and Amer and they will eat America's lunch because we have had liberals and communists dismantle this country for decades. All right, that's a reasonable fear. I don't share that fear with you because I think that the vampire in the White House will be gone before they try us. Unless you fear that they'll try us while the vampire is still there, knowing he will be as weak in his response as is Trudeau of Canada, who has become a surrender monkey. I think that's what you're saying. Is they're liable to strike while he's still in office, knowing he's a surrender monkey. Isn't that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Uh, towards the end of 2016 would be the peak time. But then they can also wait till a Republican gets into office because, because we well, will... You have, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you have to ask, why would North Korea even do a thing like this at this time what what's in their interest to scare the world what is this maniac trying to do that's the bigger question and i'll tell you the answer north korea does nothing without the approval of the generals in china in my estimation north korea is the junkyard dog of china i'm sorry to be so cruel i like korean people but this is not about korean people this is about a mad dog on a chain a bulldog on a chain envision him as a mad dog in a junkyard that barks only when his master pokes him with a stick. So you have to ask yourself, why would China poke North Korea, the mad dog, and tell it to say it set off a hydrogen bomb? And I will connect it immediately to the collapse in the Chinese stock market and the fact that they have again manipulated their currency to keep dumping their garbage on the American people. Do you understand that there may be a relationship between the two? Oh, yes. I, I, think, I think North Korea is a distraction myself. Because, because well, I do too. It's China, pull, as I say, it's China who set off the nuclear bomb in North Korea, making believe they had nothing to do with it. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. I have no link to intelligence communities, but that's how I read this picture. Great minds think alike. I, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, I'm just an American observer of events, cultural, social, political, medical, nutritional, botanical, canine, whatever. And in this sense... I have long thought North Korea does nothing without China telling them what to do. Because if China wanted to stop them, they could stop them yesterday. You know that. The people are starving to death in China, in, in North Korea. Where do you think most of their food comes from? Where does it tra how does it travel into North Korea? While this pig lives on pornography and booze, the people are starving to death. Many of them are eating straw. The man is a worldwide monster. He's committing genocide against his own people. And now he tells us he has the money to set off a nuclear bomb. How many tens of thousands of people could have been fed instead of setting off a bomb, no matter what it may have been? And where is Obama on this? Yesterday, he was a big mouth on seizing weapons uh, step by step. Why did he have nothing to say about a hydrogen bomb today or a neutron bomb? What, no, we don't know what he set off. He, he certainly didn't set off a firecracker. It was six kilotons. And as I say, six kilotons can really ruin your day, whether it's hydrogen or atomic. The man must be stopped. I'll be back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Everybody's in all the bouncing ball. We're living in wonderful times. It's a perfect world under Chairman uh, Mao Obama. Chairman Mao Obama has made it a perfect world, and he's only seeking to make it a more perfect world. In fact, today, Chairman Mao Obama's uh, goon squad in the EEOC, anyone who owns a business knows what the EEOC, it is a business-killing division of the U federal government. And the EEOC today warned employers to protect Muslim rights and encourage victims to file complaints. In the aftermath of the San Bernardino Muslim terror attacks, the insane Obama administration has issued a new warning not to Muslims to report anyone who looks suspicious in their community, but against anyone in business who are perceived to be 